Greetings and salutations, Simprat Vespasian and his trusty sidekick. Oh. Uh, doing another unboxing today. Um, I think we should have posted a few battles by now, by the time this video goes live. If not, don't worry about it, there's some coming. Um, anyway, um, this is the... We've got, we're gonna, got a few more unboxings to do, but we want to spread them out a bit and not just become a boring unboxing channel because we want to... We've done that before. We've done that before <laughs> because we're just too busy with work to actually get any games in. We're getting a lot more games in now and we're filming a lot more games now because it's easier to film games now, now we've moved. So, um, just stick with us and um, if it's an unboxing video and you're not interested, there'll be a game up soon, like tomorrow. And if it's a game you're after, why are you watching this? Yeah. Or is it the other way around? Anyway, this is the um, Hat Plastic Military Figures for Gamers and Collector. It's a Gamer and Collector. Plastic uh, Soldier? Plastic Soldier Company. Yeah, they've been around a while. Um, I, I did pick some up at uh, Triples a while ago when we went. I got two boxes, but I couldn't get other figures. I got some Italians or some people to fight Italians and then I couldn't get the Italians and then I, I sold them because I just couldn't be bothered at that point but um, so they were in 15mm uh, these are 172nd uh, Plastic Soldiers do 15mm and 172nd and they're both as good as each other they're both great it's just entirely up to what you want to do um, these come in three in a box and put you back about what £16? I don't know, I don't off the shelf um, at, I think. I think that's what I paid for these. Um, they're one seventy second scale and they're pretty good. So we'll have a look at the sprue first. Here is the sprue. It's so simple. It's unbelievable. Um, just straightforward kit you put together. No messing around with wheels. And the great thing about this one, all this spare baggage. Like fuel drums, bits of rope, all sorts of stuff. Uh, various... Um, weaponry, so you can do anything you want. There's a Panzer, uh, Panzer, a Panzer Shrek just there, and spare rifle, and some little Germans to sit inside. So that's awesome, isn't it? That's quite cool, that. Yeah, um, so you can actually make. Oh, I've got to try and use my brain now. Um, you can make three versions of SDKFZ with this, or Hanamag. Uh, this is a SDK I've said, uh, the 251 is this version. It, the 251 is this chassis. This is what you get, the 251. Um, that's the 251 with the machine gun on the front and the machine gun on the back. Standard troop carrier. Um, then there's the SDK I've said 9, which is an ambulance, which is doesn't have any weapons on it at all. Then you have the SDK I've said, oh, I've got to try and remember now. 10, I think, with the 37mm anti-tank gun, and then there was another one with a 75mm howitzer, the same gun as on the Panzer IV, early Panzer IV. Well, if you got it wrong, so we'll tell you. Oh yeah, it doesn't matter, no, <laughs> no one cares. Um, but so I did, when I put this box together, I put together two vehicles out of the three because I wanted to show you them assembled. And I'd already got one out, so I thought I'd do two. And I did one with the 37 mounted on it, and one with this. And so given, I enjoyed doing them, then. Yeah. Um, given that we're doing Stalingrad, um, the 37 was still well used at this point. So the 37 was useful because it could take out armoured cars. And let's face it, those um, men who wore grey coats, <laughs> and green, gray, greeny brown grey coats, those, they were really big on armoured cars. They had a lot of armoured cars. Huge amounts of uh, BTs, B, BT, no, it weren't BTs, what were the BTs? BTs were tanks. What were the designation for armoured cars in the... An armoured car. Yeah, we'll call it armoured car. Uh, they had one with a 45mm gun, one with a 75mm gun. Uh, the Germans could just about come up with one with a 20mm gun. And that was pretty much it until they came out with the Puma at the end of the war, which was pointless. Mm -hmm. um, but the... the, the the other people in World War II, they actually, all their armoured cars were pretty well armed. They had some pretty decent guns mounted on them. Um, and one way of dealing with that was to stick a anti-tank gun on the top of a Hanamag. This guy here. Um, there was also a version, I think, that had the Nebelwaffe strapped to the roof. I would dread to think firing that. 
Mm. While you're sat on the roof, well, I already, I would assume they got out and hid somewhere but when they fired it. I can't imagine they sat inside and fired it. We well, can't. You, you're not really sure they carry guns when you're when it's moving, do you? So no. Truth won't be in when it's not moving. Yeah, you probably get out and run away. Yeah. <laughs> but let's face it. When you fire a Nebelwaffe, everyone for twenty-five miles know exactly where you're sat. What's it? What's it for? Nebelwaffe. Um, it, it theoretically was to lay smoke screens, but they put HE rounds in, and it, it was it was like a rocket. Okay, so what would happen probably is that it would pack, troops would get out and probably take positions somewhere. Yeah. Uh, he'll start shooting and then all the enemy go, ah, it's just him, and then... Then it gets then pounded infantry, by... Yeah, then the infantry like, ah, they're there! Yeah, so you, you fire your little happy German Nebelbobber, <laughs> and the the other people you're firing at fire back with 57 bigger ones <laughs> <laughs> as you. So, yeah, you've got a six-barrel Nebelwaffer, they've got a, was it, 32-barrel... Um, Katyushka? Um, and they fired them in massive batteries as well. So you'd have 50 or 60 Katyushkas with 30, 32 rockets each, 132 millimeter rocket just pounding down on your head. Yeah, and it looks very much like the modern news. <laughs> um, just switch the tally on and you'll see what happens when one of these guys fires at you. Um, yeah, Neville Waffer, nice invention of the Germans, light vehicle, whatever, who cares. Um, but, this is the Hanamag. Uh, great little armoured cars. Uh, do you know why they sloped? Sounds tank rounds don't just pierce it. And yeah, uh, bullets. Uh, so bullets would, would bounce off. It was to increase the armour. The armour's only about 10 Yeah, it was more 10 too. Millimeter. Every, every, everyone did the curve. Yeah, idea. so they, they made it angled so they didn't have to spend money on armour. Because you'd double the armour thickness, or you had half to the armour thickness by having it at an angle. Um, which meant that theoretically it had the same armour as a light tank. Theoretically. I'm not sure light tanks can... I think light tanks are designed not to throw a grenade inside. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's also another thing. Um, the angles were to make it harder to throw grenades inside. That's another reason for the angle. Um, you got a very short gap. Um, yeah, unlike the American M3. The American M3 is a big open top armoured car. The same as this, but it's got flat sides. And the, um, I actually drove around in an M3 in uh, Nijmegen for an afternoon. Uh, we hitched a lift with uh, some guys who'd done up this M3. And so we all sat inside and it is the worst rattle trap I could possibly imagine. I think I needed new teeth by the time we got there. <laughs> um, so I can't imagine what it's like, but in one of these with all the sides enclosed in around you, Sort of all cramped in together. I mean, with the M bullets going off. Oh yeah, with bullets going off. Yeah. Ping, 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 ping. I mean, the M3. We could actually lay out in the back. We, we were folding our legs on the opposite seat. It was, it was a huge amount of room for, compared to this. Um, it, was, it was quite spacious an M3, and it's open topped, and it was a, it was a sunny day, and it was quite nice. But um, although my backside hurt quite a lot because they're not comfy. Imagine it was raining. <laughs> oh god, it would be <laughs> awful. Um, but, yeah, I should guess driving in one of these for vast distances would have been extremely unpleasant. This is why uh, invasions are very slow. Yeah, it really <laughs> is. Because um, you, 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 your bones would be just aching constantly from, from being bounced up and down. And also, another thing which I note um, is the M3... Uh, sorry, not the M3. The, this has very, very thin tracks. And... That means you're going to get stuck in mud. Right? Now, if you look at a the other side's vehicles with the really wide tracks that they have today, I've seen them just the other day stuck in mud. Mm -hmm. Right? So this guy, he's just going to sink up to his chassis in mud. Yeah, but by the looks of it, it's not very heavy. It's no, it's not that heavy. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And it lo looks like it goes quite fast. So... They're probably relying on getting across places as quick as possible, deploying infantry and then ditching it. Uh, the, the M3 uh, I was talking about, he actually got that to 45 miles an hour. I'm not sure how fast it's supposed to go in a rule book, but he was doing 45 down the Autobahn. So um, that was decently fast, although it was making a horrible squeaky noise and there was a bit of clanking going on. <laughs> yeah, anyway. 
but yeah, yeah, yeah. they are nice looking though. And uh, they're, when you when you look at these, you, you instantly recognise it as what army it's from. Yeah, um, it's definitely from that army because they're very sleek. They have that particular look to them. They seem to spend more time and effort on making things look cool. Like they are the most awesome uniforms of the Second World War. I've seen the tiger. Yeah, yeah, and it looks awesome. awesome. You see, it's awesome. It just looks absolutely <laughs> good. Like, oh wow, that, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah, also a great target for for P fifty ones to fire rockets at. So. <laughs> You're probably not going to blow it to pieces. Um. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, um, that's all the stowage on the side. I should have mentioned that. Look at all the stowage. You get all these inside the box. So you did mention that. All the stowage on the side. You just cram it full of stowage. All the different bits and bobs you can get. Look at all that. Isn't that gorgeous? All the different bits. Then you got all the guys crammed inside. Some have got, um, I think there's a guy with an MP40 on the end. And then you got guys with rifles. It's just absolutely lovely. And it's a lovely model. Um, I'm, I'm really impressed with it. Given that it's a relatively easy snap fit model, it's a really nice model. Oh. That's it. So we like and subscribe and comment down below what you think of the Plastic Soldier. A German half truck SDKFZ two five one slash C. Yes, that's everything from me and everything from him. Goodbye. See ya.